Welcome to episode 294 of the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I'm Ashley Scott Myers, screenwriter and blogger over at sellingyourscreenplay.com. Today I'm interviewing director Sean Koo. He just directed a film called A Score to Settle. And we talk about this film as well as his background and how he got into the business. So stay tuned for that interview. If you find this episode valuable, please help me out by giving me a review in iTunes or leaving a comment on YouTube or retweeting the podcast on Twitter or liking or sharing it on Facebook. These social media shows really do help spread word about the podcast, so they're very much appreciated. Any websites or links that I mention in the podcast can be found on my blog in the show notes. I also publish a transcript with every episode in case you'd rather read the show or look at something later on. You can find all the podcast show notes at www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash podcast. And then just look for episode number 294. If you want my free guide, How to Sell a Screenplay in Five Weeks, you can pick that up by going to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. It's completely free. You just put in your email address and I'll send you a new lesson once per week for five weeks along with a bunch of bonus lessons. I teach the whole process of how to sell your screenplay in that guide. I'll teach you how to write a professional log line and query letter and how to find agents and managers and producers who are looking for material. Really is everything you need to know to sell your screenplay. Just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. So now let's get into the main segment. Today I'm interviewing director Sean Koo. Here is the interview. Welcome, Sean, to the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I really appreciate you coming on the show with me today. My pleasure, Ashley. So to start out, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your background. Where did you grow up, and how did you get interested in the entertainment business? Um, yeah, I grew up in New Jersey, and um, I my mom um, raised me on uh, old like uh, black and white MGM movies. Huh. She was a big fan of those, like uh, Gene Kelly uh uh, Fred Astaire movies, and so they were always on, and and um, um, I guess I mean I, I blame her. It's her fault. She wanted me to be a doctor, and uh, it's totally her fault that I'm not. <laughs> it's also gotcha. her, her greatest sadness. But um, um, I wound up uh, performing. I was a, a dancer for a while on Broadway, and a friend of mine and I went to see a, a film in some. Uh, you know, art house down in the East Village, and it, you know, it was. We thought it was pretty terrible at the time we walked out. We could, you know, at that, you know, when you grow up in the East Coast, I feel like, and you don't know anything about movies, you know, just assume every movie is a million dollars. It's mm-hmm. just like I can't believe someone put a million dollars into that. We could write something at least as bad as that. <laughs> so, um, what I did at the time was I um, had uh, I had a, uh, an agent because I was a performer, and I just asked him for a whole bunch of scripts that movies that were being made at the time and I would kind of like studied like I didn't even know what they looked like really mm-hmm. um, and uh, studied them and 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 um, we wrote a screenplay we kind of doodled around with it got notes from him and um, long story short we were meeting with a producer and a director at the time and uh, you know it was indie stuff like you know New York indie stuff but um, I thought, oh, maybe I should go to film school, and that's kind of that's kind of how it happened. And I uh, applied to film school. I went to came up here to LA to go to USC, and um, and uh, thought I was going to be a director. So I was studying that a little bit, but also did some writing. Um, um, I'm also a writer. Mm-hmm. I, I've got a movie in production at Netflix right now that nice. I wrote, but I'm not directing. Um, so um, yeah, just kind of. Uh, Ignorance bravado really yeah. is how I how I got into it. You know, so, I think I think you need a little bit of that. Yeah. So let's talk about some of your specific credits as your career is ramping up. Um, on IMDb, your first credit is Pretty Dead Girl, a short film. Was that something you did at USC, or was that something you did once you got out? Yeah, that was my thesis film, and they they sort of tell you write what you know, and mm-hmm. so I. Mm-hmm. Uh, came out of musical theater, and I thought I would write a musical, and it was just sort of a a cheeky idea about um, you know I, I'm going to write a musical about a necrophiliac, and so so that's what that is, just like a, a little uh, kind of a little Romeo and Juliet sort of thing mm-hmm. about a necrophiliac and and the and the non dead girl that loves him, and um, um, you know it was it was it was cute and cheeky, and I got some attention from that, and. Um, um, got signed in to do a Warner Brothers movie that fell apart um, and kind of 
went from there. Mm -hmm. What happened to the movie in New York that you were working on? You said sort of the ind with an indie producer in New York. Yeah, it never happened. It um, it it never happened. But but that's true for I guess most of the time. You know, mm -hmm. you get this. Uh, you write you write a screenplay and someone takes interest in it and you um, you know do meetings on it. We were doing rewrites for the director and. Um, Suddenly, we weren't anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> suddenly, gotcha. suddenly, we weren't making the movie anymore. And that's sort of par for the course. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of disappointment that goes along with it. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, for sure. You know, your your uh, your list of credits only shows, like, the, the tip of the iceberg of what you're really doing all the time. Yeah. So how did you make that leap to um, Beautiful Boy? Um, and just quickly, maybe kind of tell us how that came about. That's a, a feature film. You wrote it and directed it. Um, wrote it and directed it. How did you get that leap from doing um, Pretty Dead Girl and having some meetings to actually writing and directing a feature film? You know, I, I had, uh, be between this sort of Warner Brothers movie that fell apart and, and another movie that I wrote, that, that actually is the one that I mentioned that is um, happening at Netflix right now. Uh, I wrote that movie, and you know, it was getting meetings and attention on that, and people were interested, but then nothing was ever happening. So out of the frustration of that, I thought I would write something small that I could do sort of independently, not independently, independently by myself, but, mm -hmm. you know, that didn't require studio money. And, um, you know, at the time, uh, you know, these shootings were sort of not as common as they are now, but they were starting to happen more and more. And I was um, really consumed about that, like a lot of people are, and, and thought, thought I, I, I don't know what happens to the parents of these shooters. Like, what is their life turned into? And that sort of turned into that movie. Um, and, um, and that was... It was, oddly enough, a movie that came together fairly quickly because as soon as we wrote it, uh, we sent it to some talents, and when the talents signed on, off the they talents signed on from the script because they were um, really interested in the roles, you know, I met with them, and, you know, less than a year later, we were on set hmm. shooting it. So that's that's kind of a, a rarity, I think, in how things happen. I mean, most movies are like like the one that's shooting right now we, we wrote that movie like 10 years ago and um you know every once in a blue moon somebody says oh whatever happened to that script and mm -hmm. you know we dust it off for them and uh -huh. they maybe try to make it and then it doesn't happen again so yeah. i feel like you know you hear those stories about the movies that took you know 15 years to make and um finally they're making it and that's definitely happens a lot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So let's dig into um, your latest film, A Score to Settle, starring Nicolas Cage and Benjamin Bratt. Maybe to start out, you can just give us a quick pitch or a log line for that film. What is this film all about? Yeah, it's it's sort of a, a character-driven revenge film about a father who uh, was in jail for, you know, two decades almost, and um, um, his struggle between once he gets out, he's being released because he's got this sort of uh, uh, unusual insomnia disease, um, and he is struggling in his last days remaining between his his need to reconcile his relationship with his son, who you know he's abandoned for more than half his life, and getting revenge for the people he blames for the circumstances of his uh, you know sad yeah. existence as it is. Okay, so um, so this is a film that you directed, you didn't write it. How did you get involved with this film? Um, was this a submission through an agent? Um, you know, a producer was looking for a director. Did you get in early and develop the material with the director? Maybe you can walk us through that process of how you actually got involved with this project. Yeah, it was a little of both. The, um, the, one of the producers that I did Beautiful Boy with uh, had this script, and um, um, he sent it to me, and um, it was uh, it was a it was a project that he had some momentum on, and sort of stalled, and he was trying to get it off the ground again. Sent it to me, and I um, plugged into it. I definitely was struck by this father son relationship, and 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 um, the the heart underneath the the sort of archetypal act, the archetypal revenge film. Um, tropes that are in in it and um we um we worked on the script a little bit with the writer and um and then we sent it to nick um uh, that's i mean it, it 
it seems fairly straightforward, but um, that's that's kind of how it happened. So I, I wasn't involved in necessarily the, the origin of the story itself. That was definitely from the writer. Um, but, um, you know, I, I definitely, we definitely did a, a polish together of it uh, or, or a rewrite of it mm-hmm. that took it to, you know, it took it to another level that I think that really, um, um, I feel like I, I, I pulled out this relationship with the father and son. I helped the writer do that. Mm-hmm. And, um, 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 which I think is, which I think was important. It was an important element to add into the story, yeah. for sure. Because yeah. it was there. It was there. It, it, it was there in its in its bones that it just needed to be fleshed out a little bit, I think. Yeah. So let's talk about the development process a little bit. Um, as someone who has written a lot themselves, um, I'm sure you kind of understand that dynamic of people giving writers notes. Um, maybe walk through that process. What did that actually look like um, when you're working with him? Are you getting... Um, you getting the script, you're sending back notes and getting rewritten pages, sending back notes. Were you guys in the same room? Were you in separate rooms? Maybe just describe that process a little bit. And were there ever some moments where you guys maybe didn't necessarily agree on things? And how did you um, work through those? Yeah, I mean, I've been on both sides of that process, which is it, which is interesting. And um, th- I think, I, I, you know, there's there's we we had a we had a meeting initially you know so i i was signed up for the project and we were talking about w- what the script could be and where we wanted to t- where i wanted to take it and um basically you know sat down with the writer and 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 pitched him my um uh my 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 take my my notes on the story and um and he was excited. John was excited right away by that. You know, there are elements, and all, all. What I like to do is, as a director. I mean, I think most directors do this. You, when you read a script, you see what's there, and you feel what's what you feel. What sort of, in from your point of view, what's aching to 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 sort of come out of it, or what's what's there under the surface that's planted that maybe nobody noticed, something like that that could be really interesting. And I think, you know, we're all in it together to try to tell the best story we can. So mm-hmm. I think it never comes across as as critique or you know criticism or you know this sucks or whatever, but you know it's it's all about oh this story would be so much more um emotional for example if we did this this and this. And I think um if that's true on a certain extent the the writer is inspired by it, which John was, and we, um, you know, we're off and running from mm-hmm. there. So in terms of the process after that, I think, I think we have more specific thoughts. Uh, it, so, you know, you kind of drop a blanket on it in the beginning and say, you know, it looks like this, I think it could look like this, and it would be so amazing. And then you sort of, you sort of dig into the structure of it and you dig into the beats and you dig into when you reveal things and all of that stuff and then and then the writer brings what they do best to it you know they they bring in personality and and um and unexpected things you know i might i might suggest this but that might inspire him to do this instead and and that's all again if it makes the story better that's all any of us want yeah, so yeah um so um on this specific script you mentioned this um this father-son relationship that you wanted to kind of um you pull out a little bit more um maybe in a sort of a more general sense um as a writer as a director who's reading other people's scripts are there some common mistakes um that you see writers make over and over again that you could give a little bit of sort of practical advice um just some common mistakes or maybe even pet peeves that you see in scripts um, that you wish writers didn't do so often um i don't i don't I don't know per se. I mean, I've definitely had people send me scripts for notes. You know, like what do I think? You know, young, younger, newer writers, um, and and give them notes. And I always say, well, do you really want to know what I think, or do you want just someone to to tell you it's great? And I think I think as a new writer, you really need to you really need to 
to not take it personally. It, mm-hmm. I, I feel like these earlier scripts we write feel like they're us, you know, and that they're... Um, um, so any criticism of them is a criticism of of you as a writer, as a human being. And I think you, I think what's hard and it's a difficult thing to do is you really need to separate yourself from it and and grow a thick skin because no one's coming out and trying to tear you apart. Like you know, you asked for notes or someone's you know working on your project with you. Like I said, everybody just wants to make the best script, the best story, the best movie you can make. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I think that's the hardest thing to do is separate your your own emotions from the thing that is the words on the paper. Yeah. But um, aside from that, I feel like I feel like depending on the film, that's I think that's another thing too is really understanding your genre. Not everything, not that everything is a genre per se, but understanding what you are communicating in the first 10 15 pages of your story and whether you're communicating the right thing because i think i think you have to you have to uh what's what am i trying to say i think you have to um give what you're selling if that makes any Mm -hmm. sense so like if you're selling if you're selling um a thriller you need to give thrills and you need to sell that thriller in the beginning. You know, you can't... And they're, they're definitely um, rule breakers. Not that this is a rule, but they're definitely outliers of mm-hmm. this idea. But I definitely feel like, you know, an audience goes in expecting a certain thing, and if you don't deliver it, then all you're doing is disappointing them because they're hoping to see that movie, and you're giving them this movie instead of a bait-and-switch. Yeah. You know, um... And sometimes it's out of your control, right? Sometimes that's marketing. Yeah. But, um, um, I mean, I, I think the thick skin is the, is really the, 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 the hardest thing and the biggest thing mm-hmm. to, um, because most criticism is constructive. And I think if you're, if you don't hear it with open ears, you just put up a wall and be like, well, that guy's an idiot or he doesn't know what he's talking about or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I think even if you do, even if you disagree with the note, you should understand that that is a symptom that might be a symptom of something else. Yeah. Um, and so I think you also have to be a pretty good doctor and say, oh, they're feeling that because I did this way back here, 15 pages earlier. Mm-hmm. And if I fix that here, they won't, you know, I, mm-hmm. there's a lot of, uh, Nancy Drewing involved, you know, in, in figuring out why somebody feels something or why are they bored here or why are they confused here. Um, I, I had a friend who talked about the ABCs of reading. Sometimes they just want to know, um, I forget what the A is, <laughs> um, but, you know, like, are you, when are you bored? When are you confused? You know, when, are you, when don't you care? Um, and there's, some, there's something for A as well. But, I, th- I think sometimes that's good too, just to find out sort of your re- your viewer slash readers um, um, experience mm-hmm. at, at, and clock it at certain times because yeah. it might be a symptom of other things because your first act is running way too long mm-hmm. or whatever blah yeah. blah blah. So this script you got from your producer. Um, and is that a common way that you would get scripts? And sort of what I'm leading to is, um, how do you typically get screenplays as a director? Because um, I always get emails from screenwriters saying, oh, how can I approach this director? Maybe you just have sort of a, a little general advice um, quickly as we wrap up um, for, for writers that want to submit. I mean, I've, got, I've gotten, yeah, I've gotten scripts from all different v- manners. I mean, I've gotten scripts from producers who are producing scripts. I've gotten scripts through you know, my manager who knows somebody or whatever, or I've gotten scripts through agents submitting to me for whatever reason they're submitting to me. Um, and, and you know, I've definitely gotten scripts from from writers that I happen to know, mm-hmm. and um, I've gotten that occasional hit up on Facebook. You know, like, I, I think it is hard as a writer, you know, if you don't have representation, how you are going to get your script out there. And I think... Um, I think you need to be um, uh, 
you know, you need to be proactive, mm-hmm. but you also need to be professional. I, I, I definitely have heard of people like bringing scripts to a Q and A and trying to give them to the yeah. to the person there, and I feel like that that. I, if it ever goes well, I think rarely goes well because yeah. it's just going to wind up in the in the in the trash. Yes. But there are all of these um, festivals and competitions, and I think they're really helpful. But um, you just have to need to be proactive. You can't just write your story and just sit it on a shelf and think that's you know that there's your genius just yeah. sitting there. I think you really have to be sound yeah, advice. Yeah, just to get it out there how somehow. Can, how can people yeah, see? But in a professional way. Yeah, yeah, sound advice. How can people see um, a score to settle? What's the release schedule like? Um, it's being released in theaters and on demand and I think DVD all at once. It's dropping all at once um, on in August. Okay. And um, they can see it any manner of ways. <laughs> Perfect. What's the best way for people to keep up with what you're doing? Um, Twitter, Facebook, a blog, anything you're comfortable sharing, I will round up for the show notes. Oh, uh, I don't. I should tweet. I don't. Yeah, I too. mean, yeah, I'm it's, a bad there, No, there's, no, bad there's only so many hours in the way. day, so no, I'm, I'm right there with you. So, well, Sean, yeah. <laughs> Sean I, really, I really appreciate you coming on the show with me and, um, and telling your story. Um, good luck with this film and, and good luck with your next film as well. Thank you so much. Perfect. We'll talk to you later. Bye. A quick plug for the SYS Screenwriting Analysis Service. It's a really economical way to get a high-quality professional evaluation on your screenplay. When you buy our three-pack, you get evaluations at just $67 per script for feature films and just $55 for teleplays. All the readers have professional experience reading for studios, production companies, contests, and agencies. You can read a short bio on each reader on our website, and you can pick the reader who you think is the best fit for your script. Turnaround time is usually just a few days, but rarely more than a week. The readers will evaluate your script on six key factors, concept, character, structure, marketability, tone, and overall craft, which includes formatting, spelling, and grammar. Every script will get a grade of pass, consider, or recommend, which should help you roughly understand where your script might rank if you were to submit it to a production company or agency. We can provide an analysis on features or television scripts. We also do proofreading without any analysis. We will also look at a treatment or outline and give you the same analysis on it. So if you're looking to vet some of your project ideas, this is a great way to do it. We will also write your logline and synopsis for you. You can add this logline and synopsis writing service to an analysis, or you can simply purchase this service as a standalone product. As a bonus, if your screenplay gets a recommend or a consider from one of our readers, you get to list the screenplay in the SYS Select database, which is a database for producers to find screenplays and a big part of our SYS Select program. Producers are in the database searching for material on a daily basis, so it's another great way to get your material in front of them. As a further bonus, if your script gets a recommend from one of our readers, your screenplay will get included in our monthly Best of newsletter. Each month we send out a newsletter that highlights the best screenplays that have come through our script analysis service. This is a monthly newsletter that goes out to our list of over 400 producers who are actively looking for material. So again, this is another great way to get your material out there. So if you want a professional evaluation of your screenplay at a very reasonable price, check out www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash consultants. Again, that's sellingyourscreenplay.com slash consultants. On the next episode of the podcast, I'm going to be interviewing director Jason Winner, who just directed a feature film called Ode to Joy. It's a high concept romantic comedy about a guy who passes out whenever he experiences strong emotions, especially joy. So obviously you can see the the, the drama there and just setting that up is that the romantic comedies are all about creating that situation where two people might seem perfect for each other but there's that obstacle and this is a good example of a really high concept premise where it's really clear why these two people can't be together because he passes out every time he is around this woman that brings him great joy so we talked through that film we also talked through the early stages of his career kind of how he got into the business so keep an eye out for that episode next week that's the show thank you for listening